everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Medallion Excellent Podcast. Today I'm here with a special guest, Ayel, from the Happiest Community. Uh, he's the founder of this amazing community, and today we're going to learn what you guys, what we're up to over there in the Happiest Community. How are you doing today, Ayel? Hi. Hello, everyone. We are on a mission to make humanity happy in all aspects wow, of your life and big, work. That's a big mission. So uh -huh. I've always thought as I've always thought of happiness as just an emotion, right? It's just like something that you experience every once in a while. Your uh, dopamine start flowing, and then. It's over, and then you move on with your life. But you made a whole community around being happy. Not happy? What's up with that? You're right, Dwayne. This is exactly what happiness is. It's a feeling. And you mentioned one of the ingredients of the chemical cocktail. So there are a couple of chemicals that go over, goes around to create that feeling of happiness. Oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine. That, because you mentioned the the hormones, so technically technically speaking, happiness is a fleeting feeling. It comes and goes, and that's the way it should be. And some and there are physical and emotional events around us that trigger that feeling. It's the most common example that many people give when asked about the happiest moment of their life is the birth of their child. So during that moment when you hold your child the first time, it's that external event that triggers that emotion in you and that creates that emotional, the, the hormonal cocktail and makes you happy. But obviously, it subsides after that. You don't stay that happy when your child is, you know, 12-year-old uh, or 18-year-old. That, that, that feeling just goes away pretty soon. Mm hmm So... Okay, I guess we're on the same page. So why make a whole community around being happy? Yeah. So uh, that definition, which I told you, is a very uh, limited definition of happiness. And that is a very, um, just one of the countless ways how one can uh, feel happy and many people have written i've indeed even attended the course science of happiness at the uc berkeley um, and to me the definition of happiness is when you feel happy we all know how what it is we don't need a scientific definition uh, of happiness in the bigger spectrum happiness is the the fulfillment, the joy. And it's not just entertainment or fun. That's just one of the many aspects of the whole happiness. You can even feel the sense of okay. happiness even when you're going through sorrow, even when you're experiencing grief. Happiness, in a complete way, is a sense of fulfillment, peace, and calm that you feel within. And this is what uh, Dalai Lama explains, one of my favorite people in the world. And I've been very fortunate to have, you know, uh, learned from him personally. And I like his definition of life, purpose. He says, the purpose of life is to be happy. Don't seek any other purpose. Now, let me give you a few examples. 
we all seek happiness in many different ways and many of them seem opposed ways for example marriage some of them some of us marry to be happy some of us get divorced to be happy some of us want to make a lot of money to be happy some give it all away to be happy so uh, and many of these uh, uh, ways of achieving happiness are societal and conditioned for example uh owning a house that's a very common uh ambition that's imposed on humans it's a, it's a common dream shared across different societies so um there's not one single way of achieving or or the living in that feeling of happiness uh there are you will find many examples of uh people whom science have identified as some of the happiest people living among us today and one of the most popular among those is a person called Matthew Ricard he's a french monk living in nepal and he has been um, you know deeply studied by uh, scientists and they have indeed identified that his brain indeed shows the highest level of happiness recorded scientifically the way science can you know uh, uh measure happiness and the way he achieved that is through meditation he has written great texts he has written great books about it he shares a lot of his experiences and uh one of my favorite uh people who's no longer no longer with us is uh, osho a person simply known as osho o s h o and uh he uh in, in one of his uh discourses he shares the book of um uh lao tzu lao tzu is the founder of taoism in china and one of his greatest books uh, ever written is the golden lotus and in which he explains um happiness as authenticity so there are many ways in which this feeling this emotion is explained some call it enlightenment some call it authenticity some call it happiness some call it fulfillment but at the end of the day it's that it's that sense of being uh joyous in the deepest core of our heart when you are no longer disturbed by the uh the everyday challenges which are inevitable those sufferings are inevitable and we can navigate through them when we achieve the sense of calmness uh which uh, in, in buddhism it is referred to as uh the the sanskrit word for is tatastha uh basically uh, it literally means uh observing sitting at the bank of a river and observing yourself um uh, as an external person being detached to yourself and being able to see yourself externally okay so so is this a tech company or a religion like what what what's this what's the happiness community like does it have technological applications it's a community that's what it is it's a community of like valued people and technology is a very important and integral part of achieving our mission because what we are doing is nothing different than what many great people before us have have done before us and many great people continue to do uh, across many parts of the world we have taken 
a different approach and using the power of technology because now it is possible given the the the, the stage in technological uh, development we have achieved we we are using the power of technology and artificial intelligence to empower people to live the core universal good human values in every aspect of your life and work because that's what Jesus had wanted, Buddha had wanted. That's what your grandma had wanted for you to do. That's what these, you know, uh, people full of wisdom who share on social media uh, in their books. However, unfortunately, for ordinary people like me, it is very difficult, nearly impossible to be able to live these values especially when you come from very modest background like how I do. We have to go through myriad of struggles every day to survive, to make a career, to make a living, to pay our mortgage, to pay our bills. And I've been very fortunate to have had tremendous support from my family, my friends. Many people don't have that. They have far more responsibility. And that is the condition of an average human today. So in that, navigating through those countless struggles, it is not feasible for a human to live those values, which create love, happiness, and joy within. So we are creating a platform, um, a multi-platform community, so that people can practically live these values in your everyday life, in your career, in your personal life, in your relationships, in your finance, in your career, in, in, in dating, in relationships, in traveling, basically all aspects that make a human life. Okay. So, all right. So this is a community of like-minded people who are seeking happiness and there is a like technological aspect to it like valued people can you go deep into that like what does like valued how does like value different from like minded like minded is interest based like valued is where we share the same values that's it and in Happiest Community, our foundation is the 11 core universal human values. And in these values, you hear the message of every great school of wisdom and scientific study ever done about living a fulfilled and happiest life. We have taken the best of humanity from the East, from the West, from various uh, ancient wisdoms from human psychology, from scientific studies, uh, from my own life experiences of having lived across the world uh, with diverse people in different ways. In, in this one life, I have lived many lives. I have lived a polyamorous life. I have lived a monk life. I have lived a capitalist life. I have lived a European life, an American life, Indian life, Chinese life. I've lived a poor life, I've lived a rich life, and uh, shared my experiences in these different ways I lived with countless different people. So I have been very fortunate to have seen and experienced life in many different ways. I've taken the inputs of these diverse people with whom I shared these experiences, and I combined them with Buddhism. Taoism, Socratism, Stoicism, you name it, from all great schools of wisdom, from East and West, and from uh, many scientific studies, from uh, experts uh, on, on this subject, and put together the commonality among all of these sources. And the summary of all of this is the core universal good human values. And that's the foundation of Happiest Community. And we are enabling 
empowering people to live these values in your work, in your career, whatever your passion, whatever your profession may be, whatever your personal interest may be. And we are doing it by creating uh, different platforms within our community where you can participate, connect, collaborate, celebrate with other people based on your interests your through our platforms. Can you go a little bit deeper into the exact platforms that you provide? Yeah, sure. So currently we have three active platforms, Happiest Work, Happiest Lifestyle, Happiest Connect. Happiest Work is a platform for individual uh, professionals to connect with employers. So, and for employers to connect with independent professionals. So this is for the work opportunity. Happiest Lifestyle is an e-commerce platform of ethical products. And all the proceeds go towards building the community. Um, Happiest Connect is the social media platform for humans to connect as humans. And similarly, we are building many more platforms, Happiest Finance for your financial needs, Happiest Healthcare for your healthcare needs, Happiest Traveling, Happiest Dating, Happiest Music, Happiest Art, and so on. So step by step, we will create more platforms. And uh, this is by interest and also by region so that people can in person meet happiest community members where you are. So step by step, we will build uh, location by based happiest groups, happiest platforms, happiest New York, happiest San Francisco, happiest Seattle, happiest London, happiest Shanghai, happiest Hong Kong, happiest Paris, and so on. So this is our grandest vision to have happiest platforms by region and by interest for every human to be able to connect with your like value people who share the similar values. So I'm curious. Um, so you mentioned a lot about Eastern philosophies, Western philosophies on happiness, but what about capitalist uh, philosophies as, as well as socialist philosophies? Like what's your, where do you lean um, in that? Because as an entrepreneur, which you are, you know, you have to monetize no matter how, I guess, mm -hmm. philosophical your, your entrepreneurship is, you still have to monetize, you still have to make money. Otherwise, you know, you're just like a 5013C, which is like a church or something, <laughs> right? So how, what's your, what's your philosophy on that? Like, do you lean more capitalist or what? I have a very simple philosophy or way of life. And everything revolves around these core universal values that we have. And money and society. You can call it capitalism or socialism. But just like every other aspect, in money and in society also, in your social life, when you live these values, these resources will help you create more love, more joy, more happiness. Money is one of the most powerful tools. It's a, one of the most powerful resources, just like technology and AI. So any tool can be used for evil purposes, for bad values, and it can be used for good. For example, uh, one of the simple tools is a knife. A knife can be used to kill someone, to cook food, feed people, or in the hands of a surgeon to save lives. Similarly, money can be used 
to bring prosperity, to create new inventions, new innovations, you know, in healthcare, in technology, in the way we live and improve the lives of human, to create more civil, more prosperous societies. And money can be used for wars and for killing and for spreading hate. So once you apply these core okay. good universal happy values in, 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 in money and in capitalism, we will create one of the most thriving, flourishing, happiest societies. And the, uh, the best example of it is the Nordic countries, the Scandinavian countries, which constantly rank as the happiest nations uh, by the United Nations. And they are also the richest and the wealthiest nations in the world. They're not the only ones with the highest per capita. There are many other nations uh, who are wealthy, but they're not as happy. But in the Nordic countries, Scandinavian okay. countries, they, because of their culture, they are using their resources, their technology, their development, their prosperity in such a way that it creates more happiness, more joy in their society, in their culture, in their community. And I have personally lived through. Those were the first countries that I uh, moved to from my place of birth. I was born in India. It's a third world, world country. Uh, but India is, it's, it's, it's at such great magnitude, a country of billions of people that to say, to look at India in one way is like looking at the whole world in one way. For example, you cannot ask anyone, how is it to live on planet Earth? I mean, you will ask, where are you talking about? In China or in Russia or in Texas or California on Earth? So similarly, India is, you know, that level of uh, diversity and magnitude. So I was born in a lower middle class family in India. And at a very young age, I got the chance to move to Europe. And I faced many financial challenges, societal challenges in India. And I had certain way of thinking because of my, uh, but the only environment I had ever seen. But when I moved to those Nordic countries, I was amazed to see the kindness of the people that they share so openly. It's, and the honesty it's just mind blowing. And when I moved to Europe, uh, many people had, you know, told me about uh, racism, which I faced in India myself because I was born in in a minority group in India, and we were born in as in a refugee family. And throughout my childhood, I faced bullying and trying to fit in the society where I never belonged in a country, in a place where I was born, where I looked, uh, you know, my skin color looked like the other people, but I had to wear a turban. It was an external sign of my religion, which I didn't associate with, but I was forced to wear a turban and, make, you know, look very different. And because of that, I was bullied and made fun of and ridiculed every day in my life. And when I moved to a complete foreign country, foreign society, where I, they spoke different language, where I looked different, where I had a different accent, where I come from a very different background, and I never felt that I don't belong to that society. Right from the moment I stepped there, they made me feel that I'm part of their society, their culture. And, and that's the magic of these values. And... Since then, I've been able to travel and live in so many places with so many diverse people in so many different ways. For example, I, we are in Bay Area right now in San Francisco, and uh, uh, I bicycled across the Pacific Ocean uh, for months in California, and I spent every night with a stranger. And so many times I got invited by people who look different than me. And once I sat with them and when we, you know, break bread, or sit around the table together and, and chat, 
you know, you realize we're all the same people seeking the same thing in life. And, and the only reason why people were able to share that with me is because they knew that I'm a traveler and I'm passing by and I shared my experiences of my life and a person on a bicycle is less intimidating than, you know, person in a, in a big truck. And, um, and perhaps because of, I open my heart to everyone I meet, like how I met you, Dwayne, we just met, you know, a couple of days ago and here we are, and this is what I do. And I've, I am the most fortunate person in the world. I have received so much love uh, from people who are different than me. For example, the people who have helped me most in my life are women. And uh, the opportunity I shared with you, how I got the chance to move from India to Europe, is because of a, a, a woman. And my first investor, my first client, my mom, of course, my rock, my sister, my, you know, the women I've been able to, you know, uh, have relationship with them in my life. And similarly, people of different race. When I live in China, you know, I was the only uh, non-Asian person in, in living in China, but how they welcomed me and made me part of their family. So uh, very and long you answer to your question. Uh, but indeed, but you are um, oh, yeah, <laughs> I am. Yeah, that's the funny thing. That's the funny thing. Uh, uh, you see that you're American. So um, you look at the whole of Asia as a continent, which is true. It is Asian. Uh, technically, I'm Asian from the continent uh, demographic perspective. But when you live in China as a person from India, I, they don't see me as Asian. Um, they see me as a complete person from a different race. And the funny thing is when I moved to Europe, for example, when I live in Netherlands, you know, these are tiny countries and their languages are like so, like 95 or 97% similar, but they see each other as different. <laughs> like the Belgian people, they speak Flemish. And... Uh, and when they watch Dutch movies, they have Flemish subtitles, which is basically technically the same language. But, I mean, if you and I go to Europe and see, listen to Dutch or Flemish, we think it's the same language. But to them, it's different. So you're right. I am Asian. But in China, I was not. That's strange. Or non so, or non Chinese. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out, like, how do you make money? Because once again, you're a startup, right? And mm -hmm. you have a lot of, I guess, philosophy tied into um, your venture. Um, but I would compare what you're doing to maybe an NFT project, right? Because an NFT project requires a community who are all engaged in the same type of... Um, idea and they subscribe to that philosophy and that's why it doesn't matter what the mm -hmm. art is it's what the art mm -hmm. represents right so that's yeah how i would kind of compare what you're doing um in a way that i could understand so i'm trying to figure yeah. out like is it yeah is it is it similar to that are you are you like just a a person who's gathering like valued people to uh Go on a venture, which which you believe will will bring them happy est, <laughs> which will you you believe will bring up them to the happiest state. Is that is that what it is? Yeah, we are giving opportunities to people to pursue your entrepreneurship goals, your careers, your professions within happiest community, just like how you would do. In your normal life, you would go to different, you know, websites such as LinkedIn or ZipRecruiter, and you will look for a job. And uh, if you are an entrepreneur, uh, an e-commerce entrepreneur, you will go to Amazon and create a shop, or on eBay, and you start selling. Uh, so, Happiest Community is just one more 
another option for you to find a job, find customers, go use our respective platforms. The only difference is that in Happy's community, whatever uh, career or ambition you pursue, in everything we do, we practice happiest values with one another. That's the only difference. So you can sell, you can buy, you can pursue job, you can earn money, you can do anything. Um, we are building that whole community. And uh, open your store, sell, find a job. But just practice these values with whoever you connect, collaborate, and celebrate within our community. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's pretty much in in uh, very simple terms. It's it's a networking organization, right? Yeah. Um, I I look at it as an entire new ecosystem. And I don't like the term nation, but a nation is limited by a region. It's limited by a physical uh, location. But within that political boundaries that we create, there are certain rules. They have their own economic system within. And within that economic system, people buy, sell. It's a marketplace. You trade, right? So we are creating mm -hmm. a similar economic ecosystem, but it is borderless. We're not creating a physical new nation. We are creating a borderless economy with a new economic system, ecosystem, where everyone is welcome to come and join. And it's an eco ecosystem whose foundation is the core universal values. Like United States has American values, American constitution. China has its own. Russia has its own. And when you move and live and want to work in those countries or nation, you have to comply to the rules of the land. Happiest community is not a land. Our rules are our values. That's about it. Okay. All right. I think that makes that makes sense now. So the reason why I had to take time to figure out the definitions is because it seems like this is kind of a new economic model that I, I haven't been exposed to before. And I'm mm -hmm. trying to grab from what I am used to, which is like, community-based nfts or maybe uh a church um those are those are what i'm used to but a church is non-profit so that's why i was trying to kind of figure out where the gap was does that make sense yeah um yeah can you can you repeat that there was a lag so i couldn't understand clearly yeah so i said pretty much what i was trying to figure out was um whether the Happy S community was a nonprofit organization or not. But it seems like you're pursuing profit in your organization for the benefit of the overall goal. So that's why it's not a church. I was comparing that your, your venture to like maybe a church, which is more of a 501c3 C in, in tax terms. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's a... It's a um, community for uh, the people, for people to benefit. It's not for the benefit of, you know, my personal benefit or the, the founding team or a few people. That, okay. that, that, is, that is the goal because otherwise we will be just yet another you know conglomerate so um that's not what we want to become i have experienced that i have worked in startups who have become highly profitable and i have seen what it does i am a, 
um, a culprit myself of complacency. How, as an entrepreneur, you know, I, I when I had my fair bit of you know success and what it does to to a human mind, and um, uh, true happiness is shared, and similarly, true prosperity is shared prosperity. We want to share it, and there's nothing more beautiful than that in this world. I would like to go into that um, where you say you like to share the prosperity. How would you go about that? It will happen with you and everyone who we are reaching out to come and join the community. When more of us come together, we will create this ecosystem it will only happen when we come together and and that's that's about it that's how we share we we are creating a community and when more and more people come when we have more customer it will become a bigger economy so as more people come our revenues will increase our sales will increase Production will increase. For example, let's say you want to open your clothing shop to sell your fine suit that you're wearing, you know, that you produce on happiest community, happiest lifestyle. You will benefit in your clothing suit business in happiest community when more people will buy it. Simple economics. So when more people come and be part of this community, when more people buy, your business will increase. And among those customers who will buy, some will open their software business within Happiest Community. Some one else will be a software engineer who will provide their software services. And that's how an economic system works. We all help each other. We all support. To us, to some, you will be a supplier. To some, you will be a customer. To some, you will be an investor. To some, you will be an investee, just like how you are in your society. I mean, today itself, you would have contributed so much to the American economy. You know, when you ordered food, when you booked an Uber, you know, when you watched Netflix, or when someone paid you your, you know, salary. You gain some, you give some. It's an exchange. And it, it happens everywhere in the world, but I have seen it, what a big difference it works to be an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur in, in Uganda or in India or in Japan or in Brazil or in a, in a small village and even in United States or in San Francisco Bay Area, it makes a big difference because of the ecosystem and the community where you belong. So our goal is to invite every person in every corner of the world to be able to have access, best opportunities with the best of humanity, irrespective of where you are located, irrespective of your race, your gender, your sexual orientation, your skin of your color, which school you went to, what your last name is, what your religion is, none of that matters. What matters is if you share these values. Come join, be part of the community, buy, sell, grow, enjoy, celebrate, live your fulfilled, happiest life for which you came to this world. Okay, so pretty much in this networking uh, community. Yes. Based Not just on networking, the product, but right? in addition, Go networking ahead. is one aspect of it. Be beside networking, actual practical application as well. Not just a handshake or an exchange of a business card. Networking ends at that. Mm -hmm. What's the point of networking if you don't do business together? Or if you are in a relationship networking, if you don't go on a date, 
or if you don't you know have a romantic relationship in a in a in a dating networking you know um, context so whatever form of networking what's the outcome of it so besides networking the application is more important and that's what happiest community is you know is about meet of course connect of course but also collaborate collaboration is 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 absolutely critical cool can you go more into collaboration like what why would people in your community need, need or want to collaborate yeah so um because the magnitude and the scale of happiest community uh, our our vision is so grand i totally understand uh, um it is sometimes challenging for people to to grasp this this vision but anything that you do in your life you can do in happiest community that is our vision so when you talk of collaboration there are so many mm-hmm. ways of collaboration right um most common way of collaboration is um professional when you are a supplier or a service provider and you sell and you buy or you're an employee seeking employment and you hire it's a form of collaboration or Uh, these days as an independent uh worker you seek a project opportunity uh such as on upwork you know and uh, or task rabbit or uber as a taxi driver um uh, or airbnb as a how- homeowner giving you know a place for people to stay in exchange you earn money so these are all many different ways of collaborations and our goal is to create different platforms within happiest community so that you can collaborate in these same ways we want to create you know an uber like platform with happiest values we want to create a tinder like dating platform with happiest values in our community that's a collaboration so the current active collaboration that you can do today right now is happiest work platform you can go right now at happiestwork.com or happiestcommunity.com and you can create your profile you know upload your resume write your background uh, if you're seeking a project opportunity in um uh, services industry in data analytics technology patents consulting strategy sales and we will connect you with companies who are seeking people with your background and your experiences and similarly if you are uh, a corporation who is seeking uh, uh employees or specialists experts and consultants to work on projects then go to happiestwork.com and submit your proposal of your requirements and we will connect you with relevant people to work with you on your projects and don't forget whatever you do together we will always practice these core good universal human values and i don't know if you got the chance to read those values but everyone can go and just look for happiest values and you will see this is not a woo woo or some great constitution or my own words nothing of this is my original thought it is your story it is what your conscious tells you if you look deep inside none none of that is opposed and that's the funny thing about it that most people who oppose each other for example nations who are at war with each other or religions or ethnic uh, or different races who fight when you when you when you read your core values then you realize that both of you are seeking the same thing 
and it's only our external you know secondary attributes that come into our come in our way and if we if we instead focus on our commonalities in our common humanity that we share then there is no need for war you see only the unhappy and unfulfilled people hate and fight and 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 create trouble in this world because when you are happy and fulfilled and contented what's there to hate who to kill what what's there to be envious of you know things that we envy on social mm. media because of her beauty external the way they look or our competitors because they just make more money or those are external attributes none of that matters because once you have that happiness within you just you know only seek joy and with one another and that's what i'm talking about when you are in those nordic scandinavian countries even when you work professionally with them i had some of the most beautiful you know um consulting work experiences in working in those countries we were working on some of the very important technological projects and it was such a joy to work uh with people who shared these good values hmm very cool so have you ever heard of a decentralized autonomous organization a dao dao you're right that's it that's it so we are um in in a, in a we are a new organization we're just uh building and getting started and we are exploring many different ways dao is one cooperative is another one one of the most famous examples is lando lakes are you familiar with lando lakes the dairy company you probably order you know yeah, your eggs and milk from butter. Yeah, the butter. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm familiar with yeah. butter. I think they make yeah. it. I think. Yes. So they yeah. they are they are a cooperative. Uh a cooperative is owned by um uh, the members of that cooperation. So in this case, it's the ah. farmers who who contribute um I don't know the number, probably hundreds and thousands or millions of farmers. they own lando lakes oh wow oh wow that's good so, oh, yeah. all right i'm starting to get it now so so with this vast community okay let me see if i can explain it all right so with this vast community uh who all adhere to the same values um as as you all make money and and uh generate income through these multiple apps as well as like just community networking which is one aspect of it then you all grow and you all prosper simultaneously right is that is that where, where we're at Yeah it's it's breaking I don't know if it's my internet or if it's your internet but uh I'm sorry Dwayne can you say that again please Okay no I'm saying that um so pretty much your vision is to have a community in which you can all prosper together as your as the business grows correct Uh a vision to have a community in which in what uh <laughs> sorry the internet in keeps breaking your voice okay like a community that you all prosper together yeah yeah did you hear that no did you get that like a community shall we, shall that we disconnect? together you shall got, we disconnect and reconnect again uh can you hear me at all or am i just like trip breaking up continuously can, can yeah, you hear me at all it's 
it's a robotic it's a robotic voice like it comes in packages like dig 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 you know so it's not compre oh, comprehensible okay. yeah. completely refresh refresh your browser Look. see if uh it's better i can, okay. I can hear you back okay. i can hear you refresh your you browser can? Oh. okay yeah I'm using the app actually. The Riverside app. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're on your phone. Yeah, just uh yeah. come out okay. come back in. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope let's hope let's hope it works. Go go maybe speak slow yeah. so that uh, because the voice is breaking, um uh, you know, it will come true. Okay. All right. So what I was saying is, imagine you, it's 1940s. Is your end, you're making a long distance call. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So is your end goal to have an organization that can grow together it prosperously? Like, uh, is your um, do you plan on distributing? the revenues that the business generates mm. with all the community members. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is, that, is that what you I think? I, yeah, I think I, I got it this time. Yes. Yes. It, it is all about collective prosperity, collective growth, collective happiness. And um, the best that one can do is give the right environment to the people. And this is what the goal, the vision, the purpose is, to provide the environment of prosperity, the environment of good values within which you can prosper, and uh, people get the opportunity to earn and make money and prosper in in your professional pursuits, in your ambitions. That that's what this community is about. So when people migrate from poor countries to the rich countries or from small towns to the big towns, uh, because there are better economic opportunities there. So similarly, in happiest community, we are giving that global scale is both global and local but it's it's that platform we are building to people and um if your values resonate with happiest community values if your values align with our values come create your shop find a job earn money help others to make money and you see this happening in many different forms. Uh, the most common is religious. For example, Jewish club, where the followers of Judaism, they come together, help their Jewish brothers, the Muslim, Muslim brothers, or the black community, the Midwest community, uh, uh, the uh, Russian community, the Indian community. They help each other and, you know, get opportunity. And because you come from the same background or you share the same religion or same race or same, uh, you know, uh, ethnic background, or you share similar values such as farmer's market, where you believe in organic food, you care for environment, you create, create, care for health, and then you create a farmer's market. Now, almost every city and region has a farmer's market. And the people who sell the produce, uh, the farmers, the people who buy in these markets, they share these values. And this is why they're paying many times over uh, for, you know, the same, uh, uh, you know, uh, eggs or sausages you could buy in, in, in other supermarket at a much lower price. But you go to farmer's market because you want to help support the local farmers because you want to share that values. So there are many examples of, you know, uh, people grow and help each other and thrive in that community. Women do that a lot. Now women are coming more and more together, helping women, you know, each other. Uh, 
So uh, what brings in people in our community is these core universal values. And this is not a rocket science. These are very simple, basic human values. So everyone is invited. Everyone is welcome. As long as you're kind and nice to one another, you don't hate, you know, you don't disrespect, don't mistreat other people. Very basic core good human values. And come and be there. And uh, so you cannot do the nasty and bad things that you're allowed to do on Twitter or on Amazon or Uber, you know, or on uh, Tinder. Uh, I mean, just two days ago, uh, my old contact, an 85-year-old woman, she sent me a message out of the blue on Facebook Messenger, and I was so happy. And we start chatting, and suddenly she got into a certain link, and she kept insisting, "Go click this link right now. You will benefit so much. You will make so much money, and the government is, you know, giving so many grants." And I, I wondered, like, what was going on? Uh, I mean, I mean, we just connected after so many years, and why is she insisting? And then I realized, ah. Her account has been, you know, hacked or someone else is, you know, imitating her. And um, so you see, uh, it's it's a common thing. The, the trolling on social media, the toxic work culture, the high suicide rate among the young teens, uh, the the racial profiling of people, you know, that's a very common thing. Uh, it happens. And... None of that will happen in happiest community ever. We will never let that happen because we are a community about our common humanity, our common human values. So that's that's what it, uh, in that environment, come and do business with one another. Okay. How do you account for bad actors, though? Because inevitably, you're going to run into some people who are there for the wrong reasons. Like, yes, of do you course. Have a filter? Yeah. Wait, put that out. Yeah. So in our in our values, we have clear guidelines, and uh, like uh, you see the neighborhood policing everywhere, right? It is onto us. You know, it's the it's our awareness, and and that's how that's the fabric of every community. It's on to us what we do, and um, and this is why the 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 core early members they set the tone and the culture of the community, and it is true for everywhere. You know, you could see how people started using Facebook in the early days. I still very clearly remember when people start showing off pretentiousness, you know, and and that's at the culture. And Facebook till date is all about nice pictures. Instagram is, of course, about photography and filters. <laughs> the, the essence of Instagram is filters. And it is a filtered life. You know, how many takes people do, you know, to show the best. That's not reality. Instagram, Facebook is not reality at all. It's all staged. It's all filtered. And, and because they already set the culture and the tone of that community, and that's what it has become. And in Happy's community, it's, it's on to us, the early few core members, that we, we care for one another. And if we see a bad behavior, someone that doesn't, uh, we we see has a bad intentions and doesn't uh, uh, comply with our values, then we will have to respectfully let that person go because uh, to us, everything is about our values. Very cool. So can you, can you uh, I'm not sure if I asked this question before, but could you expand on your values? Can you list all, all of your values? Yeah, sure, sure, why not? Um, the first happiest value is don't just read or talk about the great values. Truly and collectively live these values. Because 
the other values that I'm going to tell you about, when you listen to them, you will say, oh, of course, what's big deal about it? I hear them every day when I open Instagram from Tony Robbins or from Oprah Winfrey or MLK said that, you know, and Gandhi said that and Jesus said that and Buddha said that. What's new about these values? Of course, nothing new about it. What's new is now you we are giving you opportunity to live. So don't that's the first value. Don't just read or talk about it because there's a lot of spiritual entertainment, you know, wellness clubs charging you thousands of dollars, you know, go to this weekend retreat and meditate and say yoga and close your eyes and chant and hug each other and cry and feel emotional and then pack your bags and go and be an asshole in your workplace again to your employee or to your clients. Uh, so if you don't live those values, there's no point. Number one. Second happiest value is don't lie to yourself and don't let fear and ego control you. Work on yourself to conquer your fear and control your ego and be the happiest you mentally, physically, spiritually. We lie to ourselves. The biggest roadblock in every human is us, we ourselves, our brain, our overthinking, our overpondering. You know, what they think about us, you know, what is she thinking about me? Are they judging me, you know? Uh, am I good enough? Am I rich enough? Am I smart enough? Am I sexy enough? You know, all lifelong. Our our brain is the biggest roadblock. So once you get yourself out of the way, then it becomes the road becomes much clearer and simpler. So that's the second value, and it's a lifelong practice. We will dig much more deeper, but it's it's a very long session. Uh, which I can elaborate and you will find it. But um, basically, you have to keep your ego in check because there are many ways, funny ways of saying like ego is not your amigo, you know, and you have to face your fear. And it's easier said than done. For that, you need a supportive community. You need a support system to be able to face your fears. I still struggle, you know, to face my fears. It's a human thing. We will always do. And this is why we need support system. Like players need coaches. Every Olympian still, you know, uh, feels anxious. And they won't be able to do without their coach. So we all need our mama, our grandma, you know, who's our rock, our best friend, our spouse in many different forms, a pastor in the church. And in different ways. So this this is what this community is, where we help each other to uh, help yourself to be honest to yourself, face your fears, conquer your ego. Third, happiest value is don't suffer alone in silence and don't let others do that. Ask for help and help others. Many of us, including me, have spent a lot of our lives, precious days and weeks and years of our lives, you know, suffering alone, keeping inside. You know, every household has that example. Uh, a very common example is domestic violence, you know, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. Many women, they don't tell, they don't share because, you know, uh, either they don't have the right support system or they're afraid of getting judged or they have nowhere to go, but they feel lonely, therefore alone. But when you start sharing, you realize that so many people suffer like how you are suffering. And when we come together and share our grief and our loneliness and our emotions, then we are able to navigate and overcome this grief uh, you know, together. And that's what I did. You know, I, I had no one in my known people community for a long time to share my biggest grief and suffering that I was going through. And when I got the chance to share with others, it helped me overcome that, that loneliness and, and suffering. So don't suffer alone. Ask for help and help others. 
Uh, I still struggle. It will always be a struggle for every human. And this is why you need a community to be constantly reminded. Ask for help. Dwayne, help me. Or Dwayne can tell I'll help me. It's no big deal. Every human needs help. Steve Jobs alone couldn't have built Apple. You know, there it's thousands of people who helped to create Apple. And everything, everything human has ever created is because of the help of others. And similarly, help others in need. There's nothing more bigger privilege than be able to help others. Fourth happiest value is don't squander time. Make the best use of your time. Live in the present moment and make the best use of it. Like Oscar Wilde said, don't squander time because that's the stuff life is made of. You know, we take life for granted. You know, I still remember when I was much younger. You know, <laughs> it feels like I blink in a blink of my eye, I've become 10 years older. And time just goes like this. So, and we, we squander this, this life, this time, this precious, you know, time. Live in the present moment, make the best use of it. And this comes through mindfulness practice, which is a whole another topic, which we can discuss in topic. It requires every of these, each of these values requires practice and support. Fifth happiest value is don't uh, engage in income or a job that makes your life miserable. Have a livelihood with a balance of passion, purpose, and perseverance and persistence. So it's self-explanatory, I believe. <laughs> a lot of people struggle in our everyday work life. And many of us feel we have no other choice because we have you know, obligations, we have bills to pay, you know, we have loans, uh, we have children, we have mouths to feed. And uh, unfortunately, um, you know, people end up spending their entire lives, you know, um, in professions and in ways of earning income that make their life miserable. So again, this is about mindfulness and asking for help. Each of these values is interrelated. So when you feel you're facing a toxic work culture, a bad boss, or a client, or or simply that the, the nature of the work doesn't speak to you, it's not your passion, it's not who you are, and then, you know, start thinking of, you know, alternatives and different options. Um, and this is, again, where the community and other values come into picture. Uh, and, and what you should look at is a, a balance of, Passion, purpose, you know, perseverance and persistence. Because even if you're making a lot of money, it's not going to be a fulfilling job if you don't enjoy it, if you don't have passion. And even if you're passionate about it, you will start losing interest if you're not, you know, persevering. Because if you're not making progress, if you're not, you know, seeing the change, you know, that passion becomes boring. An artist, a creative person constantly need to seek prog progress, progression. And the way you do it is through persistence and perseverance. So it's a balance of these. Sixth happiest value is don't miss the fun and joy of life. You know, have fun and awe-inspiring experiences such as uh, time in nature, you know, traveling and bonding with strangers. And uh, we take life too seriously and we, we, we miss out on the fun and, and the joys of our lives. And, um, you know, uh, screwing ourselves every day during the day or entire week and just getting drunk on the weekends is not fun. <laughs> that's, that's not joy. That's drinking you away your sorrows. The fun and the joys of life come through awe inspiring experiences. And awe inspiring experiences, like the feeling of happiness, the feeling of awe, I don't need to experience it to you. You feel awe when you see 
the big mountains, when you see the clouds, when you feel the snow, you know, that, that the things that are bigger than us, bigger than life, those are all inspiring experiences. So nature is a great example. Besides that, it's the feeling of compassion and kindness, the bonding of strangers. When you see a strange person helping an old lady crossing the street or someone helping a homeless person turn around their life or simply helping, you know, a rescue dog or cat, you know, those are all inspiring experiences. So um, uh, that's, that's that value. And seventh happiest value is well, don't, sorry. Yeah, no, no, cool. So um, we're going to have to wrap up because uh, my computer is about to <laughs> run it out of time. <laughs> it's the only reason. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want. I, okay, I don't want to go 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 off. ahead. Go ahead and uh, yeah, go ahead and what? everyone, you can re read the values on happiestcommunity dot com. Yeah, yeah. No, as a Christian man who believes in Jesus Christ, like that stuff resonates with me as well. Um, but yeah, let's wrap up. Um, do you have anything you, to promote? I, well, the funny thing is, <laughs> you speak Jesus and you say promotion. So I got to say something. You see that all these kindest, purest people, such as Jesus Christ, they never created their own religion. Buddha never created Buddhism. Christ never created Christianity. The, the form of religion was given by other people who promoted, who created a promotion, you know, uh, uh, or the different form around it. All Jesus wanted... Jesus was just full of love, compassion. Jesus was all about love and helping those in need. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's what life is all about, you know. Share, he was overflowing with yeah. love. That's, that's who Jesus was. Um, and, and we just put labels on it. So um, I'm sure if Jesus was alive, we will have his, you know, blessings or even if as many people believe his soul is still with us, you know, he, he's blessing. All of these people, be it MLK or Mother Teresa, they're smiling and they're blessing. And uh, I believe they're all saying, go child and, you know, create the world's happiest community. So my friends, my fellow humans, come. You know, we are here with open heart, open arms to make humanity happy. To make your loved ones happy, uh, you are born. You get only one life, and you know don't squander this beautiful opportunity. This, this, this amazing only one life. This miraculous, magical one life you have. So live the happiest life for which you was born, and uh, see you the happiest you, the happiest Dwayne, the happiest Stacy, the happiest Ming, the happiest Juan. You know the happiest. You know Nancy. Every human, come join and see you at happiestcommunity.com. It's free. There's awesome. no cost to join. Yeah. Everyone check it out if your values align. <laughs>